Hey everybody, it's me, Uncle Greg, aka the Free American Spirit, now known in the trailer park as the Sun God. Okay, boy, look at all those spots. In today's video, we're going to go underneath the solar panels and run some voltage and amp tests and compare them from ones I did a couple days ago. Then we're going to wire up this set of panels right here, these seven and one string of series, that string of seven in series, then we're going to connect it into parallel. So let's get at it. Let's have some fun. If you saw me before, I did some real quick tests on a bright day. It's just starting winter around one o'clock. Now these videos, they're supposed to get 320 watts, but that's optimal in the, what do you call it, in the lab. So on a bright day in summer, it would be better than a bright day in winter, which we're in now. And of course, these are all fixed. So they're fixed at about 32 degrees. But for winter in my area, it should really be 45. And they're not quite south, but they're pretty south. So this is representative if it was on your roof or something like that. The only way you're going to get more is if you were to buy one of those solar trackers, really expensive, and track it all around. But today's cloudy and whatnot. So I already did a couple. Back on 11.8, we got 37.7 volts at 6.2 uh, amps with the clip over the wire so that's let's round it off 40 times 6 is what 240 and then today in the shade 37.9 volts but only 2 amps so you're looking at what 80 watts okay that's kind of how these things produce even though they're high efficiency here's another one same deal 37.4 times 6 so you know round it off 46 is 240 and then today, 38 times 1.3, even worse than that one. So it really just depends, guys, how your panels perform, because they don't do what they say on the label. So let me go, and you can listen to our sponsor. That's right, kids. I don't have a sponsor. I sponsor myself. That's why it's real important for you to do the thumbs up share the video, leave some comments, YouTube loves that, and if you really love me, use that Amazon link to buy anything you want, because it costs you nothing more but helps us. So let's go look at some parts that came in so we can get this project going. Show some of the stuff we got here. This is the uh, little box that goes on the outside of the shed like that, so your negative and pos positive wire will go up through. That makes a little waterproof seal. These are some inline fuses. I'm going to be hooking up two strings of series, then connecting them parallel. So before the parallel, I'll be putting these in line to a string of fuse. I got a couple extra for future proof, and I'm going to be upgrading later and get another inverter. I'll be running more strings. That's finally the piece that came in I was waiting for with the two ends. And then in this box, we got a couple tools. Uh, this is the splice on some ends of the wire so on this mc4 cable you know, they have ends and the reason i bought this cable you can buy it in rolls and then put these ends on um, i bought two 25 footers which i'll need and then these 100 footers i bought them because they were the same price as buying a 100 watt roll so i'll cut one end off splice it through there and then when i get to where i'm going i'll use those special pliers and some of these, I'm not going to open them up, they're, but they're just ends of MC cables, male and female, that you can connect. Then we got some double joiners, which will connect, you know, the cables in parallel. So you take the two positives from the two series and connect those, and then makes it a parallel. I'll explain that a little later. Another tool, so besides the crimping tool, I got this tool, which cuts the outside sheathing really nice. Makes it a little easier, more professional. I got a bunch of extra junk in there. Let's get off of my wife's official workbench there and we will get at it. So here at the site, we got the two rows of panels. So this one row of seven on the bottom will all be connected in series, which means this is a positive and this is a negative and they're all put the same. So the first negative will be connected to the second positive the second negative will be connected to the third positive and so on down the line until we get to the end 
when I'm done with that string, they'll all be in series, meaning there'll be a positive end down here and there'll be one negative end down there. Then I'll take a positive, one of those 25 footers I was telling you about, connect to that and run it all the way down there so that it's even with that negative connection down there. And then up here we have just the opposite because they're facing down. We got a negative over there and a positive, so I'll take a 25 footer after I connect all these up and run it all the way down there. So when we get all the way down this end, okay, we'll have a series of seven panels and a series of seven panels. So let's just round these off. These are 40 watt, excuse me, 40 uh, volt at 10 amps, okay? So what happens is your amp stays the same because you don't want your amps too high to go into the inverter. And so, but your your volts add up. So 40, 40, 40, 40 times seven is what, 280, right? Something like that. Yeah, anyway, so, and then that will be the same. And then once we put them in parallel, it's just the opposite. Your amps will double, but your watts will stay the same. So when we connect these in parallel, we'll still have the 280, it's not quite that much, volts, but we will now double the amps from 10 amps to 20 amps. So you have to look at your inverter and see how much operating volts it can take and how many uh, amps it can take. You know, it'll say like a 5,000 watt inverter or a 6,000 watt inverter, but you need to pay attention to that tag on the side to know which one, you know, which panels and how you're going to line them up to fit your inverter. Um, I will be getting a second inverter. This will technically be just a little high, I believe, over my my uh, inverter sticker so i might take you know a panel off from each string and put it on the second inverter and add some more later that was already kind of planned in if, if this doesn't give me enough juice but we're going to try it this way because they say you know you can go over uh your inverter those limits just a little bit um i don't recommend that i'm going to try not to do that but they say you can do it because you never get full juice like it says on the stickers anyways and the inverter you know may or may not have overload protections so when we get to the inverter part we'll talk about overload protections and that kind of thing so let me get this wired up and then i'll show you what it looks like okay kids so this is the 25 foot positive you see it's red i ran all the way down there now unfortunately when they put these panels up, they only use black wire. So the only way you can tell this is a negative is because it's a female end and the positive's a male. However, you never want to trust this, especially if you're starting to splice your own stuff. You always want to get a meter and then make sure it's reading correctly uh, when you do a volt test, a DC volt, not an AC volt. If it's not correct, it'll show a negative in front of the number. And if it's correct, it'll just say a number like whatever these are, are combined. So theoretically seven times four, 280, right, volts. So I think I'll be a little less than that. It's, well, it's about 1130, but it's winter. So I'm gonna go get my meter just to see what each of these strings, the string here, same over here, and this string here. Now, when I go to run these, since the negative side is both black, you know, I will take red tape and mark the female positive so I know going in, or I'll just use red wire from henceforth, but I'm gonna mark these anyways, and there's going to be some joiners and whatever, we'll get that in a minute, and a cutoff switch, which I don't have right at the moment, we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, just hang with me, let me go do my test. Oh, I just wanna make a couple notes here. I've got my meter, it is set on voltage, it's set on DC, see the little DC? And that number does not have a negative right there in front of the two so you can see that the red prong is in the red wire the male which it should be and the black prong is in the female black wire prong which it should be so that is correct now i just want to make a note that when you're messing with these now that they're hooked up in series you had the 262 volts or whatever i haven't checked the amps yet that's now, you know, pretty high voltage. So I'm going to tape those off and put them up here because I'm not connecting them to anything. Once I wire, you know, zip tie all these up and make it look nice, but we have more to do here. Uh, just so 
you know, if anybody wants to be stupid and stick their fingers in, it won't kill them. But with that being said, I mean, the connection is pretty far down in there. I mean, you really got to try to get your finger in there to zap yourself. But with the electricity, you want to be safe with sorry. You know, better safe than sorry. So let me check these out and see what they do. Hold on. Here we are on the second set. Being very careful not to touch the metal on those probes. And the red prong is in the male socket, which is the positive. And you can see DC 261 volts. All right. And so those are correct. So let me shut these off. I can go like that so I don't touch them. And I'll shut these off and make the next connections, which you'll see in just a minute. Our next step is to put in this uh, inline fuse. So this is a series. I'm putting it on the end of the series on the positive side. And I'll put one on this other series over here. This is a 20 amp fuse. If you slide it in there, it's very tight. And then when you screw this together right here, the other end goes in there, it's very tight. Okay, so you, it has a male and female end, so it doesn't matter which way you put the fuse in. But just a caution, you have to, there's a formula for this. You have to figure out how many volts and amps are going through here. Then you have to look on your panel and see what the maximum amp rating is and whatever. And there's a formula, you times it, times two strings, times whatever, blah, blah, blah. You can look that up. I already did. I know I need these. But, you know, that's a little over my head to try to explain it. And I'm not an electrician. So make sure you either have an electrician or solar guy help you or you get online and find the video. But let me put these in. There'll be one on each before I put these in parallel. Bear with me. Now that I've got my inline fuse connected to both of the serial positive sides of this. Remember in serial, all of my volts are added together. So I got right now like 260 volts, but my amps are still 10 amps. Okay. So that's really good, but I want to connect these together now in parallel. So there's two for the uh, negative side. So I'll take that negative and this negative and plug them both in there and that'll come out to one negative. And then same with the red ones. I'll plug one in the positive, one in this positive, and then you'll have one line. So you'll have two lines going into one and two lines going in one, just like as if you hooked up batteries in parallel. So now what's happening is the volts are all going to stay the same. You got 260 here, you got 260 up there, or whatever they may be. But my amps are going to double from 10 amps to 20 amps, okay? Because this is outputting 10 amps, because in series they all stayed the same, remember? So I'll put these on, and at that point, you know, we're going to be very cautious, because it's already getting high. If you were to do a dead short between that and that, you would see it arc pretty good. And once you get these together with higher amps, you're going to see it arc even more. I mean, basically, you could weld with it. So, you know, we're going to want to tuck those away, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let me put these on, show you what it looks like. And once again, we're going to verify now that all the connections are made. We got the positive correct, the negative correct. And as you can see, DC volts, 261. So the volts stayed the same right because we paralleled them if we were to series them again it would say 500 something but anyways 261 volts just the way it should be so let me tell you what these fuses are for the fuses protect this parallel at this point okay there i'm sorry this series string at this point that whole string all seven panels are in series and same with that one over there so if one of these panels were to fail Okay, what would happen is least resistance, the electricity would try to flow back that way. All right, and then the 10 watts from here, excuse me, the 10 amps from here would flow into the 10 amps from there. That would be too much, and you could cause real serious damage, or maybe more. Real serious damage to one of your panels that could catch on fire. So not only are you protecting these wires from here back, you're protecting this array. So if you had a problem, the fuse blew, you would have to just go down. From this point forward, okay, there'll be a box here that I'm going to put on. I don't have it that these will plug into. Now, some people use a combiner box and whatever to do all this, but I have a separate box that has an on-off switch. So if I had to come out here and work, I mean, if I'm working in there and something happens, I can turn the 
thing off. I'll have another off switch in there just for convenience, but you know, I can work on this wire going into the sheds, the two wires. I only have to put it on the positive side. Um, the fuse will protect the wire as well. You know, it's like a battery. If you have a fuse on one end of the battery and then you have a charger going in your car and you don't have a fuse on the other end of the battery, you know, if something happens, electric can flow either way, you know, you could still burn up your wires. So I hope that makes sense to you. So now I just need to take a bunch of zip ties and I'll actually take these and run them nice. And you know, once again, this is now 260 volts, probably close to 20 amps. You know, if you had a, if you went into your electric box and grabbed a 260 volt line at 20 amps, it's gonna fry you. You don't wanna do that. So I'm going to put some tape over this one, even though it's way down in there. Same with this one, even though it's way down in there. I'm gonna put some tape over these pretty good. I'm gonna tuck them up over here after I get done using all my zip ties. So guys, I hope you liked it. Thumbs up. They love that ogler rhythm at YouTube. Remember to subscribe, share it if you can, make comments, they really like that. And if you need something, you know, buy it from Amazon with my link. No cost to you, helps me out. See you on the next video.